Hello, welcome to Pitch Your Accounting 2012 setup guide for your new company file. And today we'll take a look at creating or adding customers and sales. So I want to get through or give you a tutorial specifically only for customers and sales. I know that when you're creating a company file, it becomes really overwhelming because you have to type in gazillion amount of data. <laughs> and that's a good thing. That means that you have a ton of customers and a ton of vendors and etc. But the point being is I'm going to make sure that you understand completely how to set up your customers and sales. And uh, we have everything correctly done. So I'm going to use the setup guide wizard to make it a lot easier for you. So click on setup, uh, click on file and click on setup guide and then click customers. Once you get to this window, we're back in here again. So we're going to hear a customer is an individual organization that purchases product or services from your company. Would you like to add customer and say, yes, I want to enter customers now. Then you click next. So after this, this is where you want all your information uh, regards to your customer. So click add a new customer. If you have several thousands of customer, well, that's, that's not going to be fun. But this is how you add it. So on top of here are information or a command that you can do with this icon. You can create new look at the current list of customers that you have. You can save, save new. This is what you usually do if you have multiple, if you're creating multiple customers name, you can delete it if you want. You can only delete it if there's no transaction that's associated with that existing customer. You can change the ID. Now for changing the ID of a customer, you can only do this if you have multiple users and have multiple accounting location uh, computers that are accessing the file at the same time, you can't change that ID. So in most cases, doing maintenance is only works if you have um, one file open at the same time. You can't have multiple file open at the same time and then change the ID. You can create events for this particular customer. So just get yourself familiarized with the, what these are like call from, call to, meetings, etc. And the dates and who this customer is for. And then you can look at the logs. So what were the changes that was done as far as customers this particular customer is concerned. Um, that's after you've already created a customer and that's after you've started adding uh, information about these customers and transaction about these customers. You can create letters for this customer. You'll need Microsoft Office uh, Word or Excel sheets in order to create letters or Word specifically and some other stuff, um, other things later for Excel and PowerPoint and things like that. Um, you can write letters to them and these letters are default on or they're kind of built in with Peachtree. You can look at their current reports. So you'll have age receivables, customer history, customer ledger and all other things that you can pull up. This consistent with this, with this particular customer and these are reports associated with customers and sales. OK, so now what do we do? When you're building up your customer, first is you want to configure or figure out what would be your numbering system. Let's let's look at this in this perspective. If you're a company that does business all over the United States, you want to probably code your customers based on if they're in the Midwest, in the Western Coast, East Coast, and you know, um, and things like that. So if I'm in the Midwest, I'm gonna go. MID05. Um, or 001 for my customer number one in the Midwest. Now, if you are doing a ton of businesses all over the United States and you want to code it based on state, you want to do Illinois 005 or, you know, can um, say California 001. Um, so that's really, it's a open field. You can decide how you're going to number it based on how you want to do it, basically. And then for the names, uh, then you put in the current name, customers like ISO Networks LLC, for example. And then input as much information as you can. The customize this field for your business 
you can add this the one that comes out right in here you can change the title of that to a good um, any kind of data there and you can check it if you want it shown or you can just disable this additional data and this will not come out here anymore so and then here you can put in what kind of customer type we haven't created a customer type yet but you can fill in as many data as you want but if you have multiple shipping location you want to click these um, actually it should be in here so bill to and then you can have multiple addresses address billing their shipping one two three four five six seven etc and then here you can build the contact uh, you can also add multiple people here if you want um, and then you can do history sales sales information and then the payment and credit so for the payment and credits um, the terms and credit is by default these numbers here but you can change that so you can customize it okay this is a good customer I would say no credit limit for him or always on hold or different type of credit statuses you can change this number you can change these dates and, and, and things like that and you can also specify whether if this customer is inactive or you don't want to work with them anymore or if they're still a prospect they haven't ordered anything from you you want to specify the receipt settings so which money which things this goes to once you receive a payment for this customer so this is based on your current ledger so if you want to say oh this person always pays me in cash so i'm going to do that here i want to do cash payment and then always use that right if you're a restaurant or something like that um and then you can also do the credit card information you can save the credit card if you do want to use uh, if you if they have credit card that they'll provide to you and then your sales info if you have a sales representative that that would be associated with that particular customer you add them in here because that would be and especially if you're paying them commission then it would be great because that will calculate that representatives commission automatically and then the sales accounts the general ledger sales account where does the sales goes to is it goes to sales income to interest income and and all that so or other income for that matter um, and then you can also do a open PO number and then how do you ship these things is there a resale number which price uh, level are you going to put this uh, customer is it, if it's a bulk so that that I'll explain it to you in details not at the moment um, and then replace item ID with uh, as UPC or part number that's if you're reselling or selling specifically and you don't want the item ID to pop out then you can use a UPC especially if you're doing some label labeling or if you have multiple part that you're selling to that particular customer so they can use this additional information here you can also do whether or not you'll email it or in a payable paper form are you going to email the sales representative as long as this uh, order is processed and then you go back to this history here well for this history you can add in when the customer started being a customer with you guys and then the last invoices that was paid and all other things in most cases this will automatically fill out once you've created the ledger and, and other things but um, the most important part of this because we're so big into the beginning balances is to create the customer beginning balances so if you're an existing business and you just move into peach tree and this customer has beginning balances for you you want to be able to collect it after you've already moved into peach tree and that's what you need to do create a customer beginning balances so um, you have to save that one first and they said yes and then here's the nice thing about this so for the beginning balances you want to put in the invoice number the date of that invoice the purchase order number and the amount so for these AR account receivables that's our account receivable number that automatically goes in there unless of course you change that um, and then then that would total the whole balances after you put everything here so you'd have to verify that it's the correct number of transactions and then the correct account balances and that will become the beginning balance account receive a receivable balance so if you have say 200 customers 
your account receivable should total to this. But these numbers here are for ISO Networks LLC and the number of transaction is these. And if you have 20 transaction, it should be 20 right here. Okay. And then you can save it once you're finished with it. Now, um, that's pretty much with customers and I hope you guys uh, learn something and um, let me know if you have additional questions about creating a customer by emailing me at support at ISO Networks LLC. Thank you.